Hello, now you can hear me. Hello, everyone, and welcome back again to Code with Italians. You will notice that there is someone different from the usual up here. Uh, that's because Ivan had to take care of something uh, with some urgency, but he will be joining us in a few minutes. So don't worry, you'll have Spike, you'll have Ivan. Uh, it's not just uh, Chris and I today, but we're here with Chris because, uh, and I think Chris, this is the first episode we do with you that is not uh, design one, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, I love yeah. your mug, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so today we're not going to be talking about design, except in kind of some way we are, because uh, the reason you're here to talk about Studio is that you are involved with the design of Android Studio. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So less about yeah, less about uh, learning design and more about how showing. we designed the thing you're using. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I find this incredibly interesting because when I uh, when we talk uh, about stuff in studio, it's always like, oh, but why did you end up doing things this way, and how did you end up coming up with that feature? And that's something that I don't think gets much exposure. Um, and it's to me endlessly fascinating. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask a lot of questions, I think. Uh, but um, before we get started, I don't normally do the even thing, even does the even thing. So I'm going to be terrible at it. Uh, I think there was something about if you like the show, use Amazon Prime to, sub to, to subscribe for free. Oh, God, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> I am so bad. Um, and yeah, if you like our show, you want to support us, you can also support us on uh, Coffee. Uh, we have a membership program. You also can buy stickers from our coffee shop. And we have recently started a uh, merch shop where you can buy our new T-shirts. They are super great quality. They are sustainable and they're made in Italy. So uh, you get a slice of pizza. <laughs> no, you don't get a slice of pizza because that would stain the T-shirt. That would be a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> but maybe, maybe, I don't know, in spirit. Uh, with that out of the way, I'll probably have even repeat the even thing at the end because I was very bad at it. Uh, I think we should instead be um, talking about Android Studio. So, uh, first of all, for those who live under a rock, uh, the latest version of Android Studio is Electric Eel. It was announced a few weeks back at Google I.O., I think, uh, in yep. preview. Uh, it is uh, based on, theoretically, based on IntelliJ 22.1, although I don't know if it's already based on that. I'm just checking. No, uh, still not. not not yet. Okay. We're we're getting we're getting there. <laughs> I I know very well the life cycle, so I understand why this is happening. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of very very cool new things in Electric Keel. Obviously, folks, if you have questions for Chris about how like why things are the way they are, uh, then the chat is there for you, just use it. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, and I think we're also gonna talk about some of the things that were added in uh, Dolphin. So the version that is currently in uh, beta, right? Yes. Whereas Electric yep. Eel is in Canary. Um, where do we wanna start? <laughs> uh, Should I share your screen? I guess, well, do you I have stuff, but yeah, do do you I... want to talk about something before we show and tell? I think well, I think what we could do is uh, I'll say a bit and then you you know, we can start with the question. I think you had some questions and we can start there. Yes. Yeah. Um Yeah, I guess I would say at a high level for electric eel dolphin. So, um you know, I think one of the things that, well, we've been playing catch up um, because I think the chipmunk release took quite some time to get out. Uh, mm. And so these next two releases kind of feel like they're they're coming out faster. Um, 
but overall, uh, you know, I think there are, I guess, three themes we've thought about with these releases. I think the first one is, um, you know, kind of supporting what the Android, you know, kind of the latest and greatest of the Android platform. And so for the Android platform itself, like the big thing at IO, our narrative is around, you know, these newer form factors that Google's actually investing in finally. Yay, Pixel tablet, Pixel watch. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, in through these releases and then through the next release, which will be F, which is animal, animal to be named. Um, you'll see features that revolve really around supporting folks building apps that are adaptive for large screen and tablet, but also for like the where developer story, like, you know, it, it's a, a developer story we've kind of ignored for quite some time. And the team's working hard to like fix a lot of kind of like the basic stuff, like just even being able to deploy to the right emulator. Um, now with Wear OS 3, there's a lot more stuff you can do besides just uh, watch faces. You can do tiles, complications. And so we're working to, you know, improve features for that. So it makes it easier to develop those things. Um, then that's on the platform side. And then also, you know, supporting Android 13 as well. Uh, and then I think the bigger, one of the other bigger themes is Compose. I think that's kind of obvious. Um, we want people to use Compose. And so it's, you know, there's a lot of investments we've made in Compose itself. Like Live Edit was kind of the, the star of the Compose show, I would say, and we can, I can actually, we'll show some of that here because I think I've been using Live Edit, you know, internally for a while. And so there's a lot of interesting use cases I've found for myself. But I think what's great is that now that it's out in the wild, um, we, we released it because we want people to try it for all their kinds of use cases because there's not, there's just not enough we can do internally, I think, to kind of iron out all, everything. We also, um, you know, so we don't have the right code bases, I think, or just the right context to test everything. So we really want folks feedback. And so just releasing it early so people can opt into it, even in Electric Eel was was a big goal for us. Um, and then the third, I think, is, is overall quality. Um, we, you know, we talk about quality a lot. And I think the biggest effort we did was years ago with Project Marble. I don't know if we'll have like a official like Project Marble part two coming up, but the team itself is like cares a lot about quality and like we're investing a lot more in it. And so even though there are a lot of new features, um, there's a lot of quality work that's being done under the hood that, uh, you know, maybe doesn't get the, the limelight, but it, it is happening. I think in some sense, like live edit and live edit itself for preview and for device was a big call for a w big wake up call for us because we know preview has been plagued with performance and reliability issues for quite some time um since arctic fox really and i think we have done a lot of bug fixing through bumblebee through chipmunk and through dolphin uh and i you know i think for me in electric eel i i finally feel like really happy about where we're at i think there's still a lot more improvements to go but like i think it's it, it's a much much better experience now than it was before yeah. my personal experience with electric eel so far is that obviously it's still early days so there's still rough edges but a lot of the things that were really annoy me uh, in previous versions, um, such as the fact that if you had live edit of literals enabled and you started changing the code and then for some reason, at any point in time, your code was bred, then the app would crash on the device. It was like, where, <laughs> what, how? It took me some time to understand what was happening there. Uh, and I like that now it just says, oh, it's, there's uh, it's out of date and I put uh, live update uh, on uh, live edit on on pause. Like it's it's those things that make it much much nicer. Yeah, and we can I can talk more about the design <laughs> there and the the trick the tricky part there. Um, the other thing on quality, I think you had, we talked about it before getting on it is investing in features that we have. So I think like I said, improving preview was a big pain point for compose, but logcat you know, is a big thing that we improved in Dolphin. And um, so what will happen in Dolphin is that it will, you know, it will be in stable, um, but it will be an opt-in. So, you know, people who are new to Studio or, you know, our existing users to Studio will see the old Logcat when they uh, install Dolphin, but then we will prompt you to say, hey, like we have a new version. And so for those who haven't been following the Canary channels as actively, um, 
you know, they'll have a chance to actually try out Logcat V2. And so, uh, you know, we did that because like, if people, if there, you know, there might be features or things that are still missing in the new version. And so we don't want to like totally block people from using the old version if they need to. Um, mm -hmm. But we want more feedback from Logcat. So uh, on the new design. And so that's why we kind of released it as kind of this kind of opt-in preview feature for Dolphin. Uh, this is interesting because I was reading the the release notes for uh, Electric Eel earlier to recap in my mind uh, what what was new, and I I read about like it's now uh, enabled by default uh, the the new logcat and I was like, wait, did I enable it so fast I didn't even realize I did it? <laughs> <laughs> back in I guess back in the dolphin days I must have just like oh new thing yes I'll I'll have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think the hope is that you know we can keep it on as default through Electric Eel. Um, but yeah, I think getting getting folks' feedback will will help with that because um, yeah, when we did release it in Dolphin Canary Eight or something, like right off the bat, people were like, "This is great," but <laughs> there are these things missing. So and things that I think the team hadn't caught before. Uh, are you maybe saying that when you redesign things, people uh, have opinions? <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, I, that that happened this week too. Um, for those that know. Yep, that happens on my side as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, um, IntelliJ is going through a very big visual redesign. Uh, Let me get the link for that. I, yeah, I um. I'm act I've actually been pretty involved with the redesign uh, with the team. So we, you know, because every design decision IntelliJ makes is something that Studio has to to uh, inherit. And so, you know, we try to work as closely as possible with the IntelliJ team to make sure that things work for them, but also for us down the line. And this was a very big change, and we've been aware for it for some time. And now it's finally out there, which is great. And I think it's great what the team's doing. Um, you know, release it in the open and, and allowing people to kind of give feedback and actually try it before um, before it becomes the default. And there's actually a very generous timeline for to me in, in terms of when it's the default. So, uh, yeah. Um, but it is, it is quite different from the current design. So, you know, there's going to be a, a brief period where I think people will feel like they're not as productive because, you know, things have the cheese has moved essentially, um, but I think you know. I think that's that's natural and it's expected. So, but yeah, I think if the best thing to do is just to try it out and get the team feedback. Um, but I'm also curious what people think because, like I said, this this is going to impact Android Studio at some point. <laughs> and so for us, it's like the sooner we we know, the better because then we can um, tell the IntelliJ team, hey, like we really need this feature or this thing really bothers Android developers about the new design. So, you know, what can we do about it? Um, on that topic, it's uh, if you are getting into the preview and you get to use the new UI, uh, remember if you use custom themes, you probably want to disable those and you want to make sure that you're using the new light or dark theme because things will be broken to some extent. Uh, depending on the theme, uh, that might be a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, just to save everyone time, uh, if you are one of the people that use the material theme for IntelliJ, for example, disable that before uh, enabling the new UI, because um, I doubt that they have uh, fixed the bugs already on the material theme side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also, if you do happen to open an Android project, um, it's based, the Android plugin is based on Arctic Fox, so we definitely have no work about the new, no awareness of the new UI. So you're, it's just going to be what it is. Um, so yeah, that's just yeah. A, a warning. I hope that now that Bumblebee is stable, at some point we'll get the Bumblebee Android plugin in IntelliJ, but I don't know if it's scheduled for 22.2 or 22.3. So. We'll find out. <laughs> I, I I heard on the street that they're jumping straight to Chipmunk. <laughs> oh, okay. This this so. tells how much I know about what's going on around me. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. well. I only heard that 
I only heard that this week. So I was like, because I was concerned too. I was like, wait, they're only an Arctic fox? I was like, that's not great. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, the, as you said, uh, it took a lot of time to get uh, Chipmunk out of the way. And in turn, that, I guess, probably slowed down Bumblebee as well. So for people that don't know, how the life cycle works between Understood and IntelliJ is a long and complicated process. Uh, essentially, uh, the team at JetBrains creates IntelliJ and IntelliJ platform, and they ship a version. When that goes stable, generally speaking, Android Studio team builds the Android-specific stuff on top of the new IntelliJ stuff. So IntelliJ needs to go stable. Then Android Studio needs to build to rebase cherry pick, I don't know, their code on top of the new version with all the customizations, all those things. And then once that stuff goes stable, then the IntelliJ team can get it in their, uh, on their turn and bring it into the next stable version of IntelliJ. So uh, if you're wondering why sometimes it takes some time to, to get stuff uh, into IntelliJ or into Android Studio, that is essentially why. Um, I wish it was faster, but it's also a very complicated process. Yeah. Merging is hard. Yeah. <laughs> and there's people on both sides that I uh, salute and admire <laughs> for the work that they do because it's not yeah. easy at all. Um, anyway, do you, do you want to talk a bit about the log cat stuff? Uh, because we mentioned it, and I think it would be interesting to like, and I guess this is my first question. Why did you start redesigning Logcat? And how did you end up with the new version of Logcat where you've essentially taken out most of the UI elements and switched to a more text command base, like search query command base uh, UI? Okay. Yeah, um, I, th I think it's actually a, an interesting story because there isn't like a, a story, like a, like a moment where people are like, oh, you know what we really need to do? <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, you know, Logcat, like we, it's been there, you know, since the beginning of Android Studio's time. And um, like when I joined the team five years ago, it was there and uh, we, hadn't I think we hadn't even redesigned it back then it was just that was the design and a lot of people you know everyone uses it day in day out but for whatever reason we had not thought that like you know maybe we should actually redesign it and kind of rethink it because you know is it really working for people um and so we had a engineer who who joined the team maybe a couple years ago who was very passionate about he was an android developer as well mm -hmm. but also worked at google but he was like log sucks like here's all the things that like you could be fixing and i think a lot of his experience was uh off pipcat which i think was a very popular alternative to logcat um uh, and so he you know he had all these ideas and he's like i really want to get this done and people were like yeah i think this this sounds good and so um it kind of became his mission to to fix it and uh with that you know we were like okay well let's get design involved and let's get product involved and so everyone kind of really jumped in and said, okay, like, what are the things we really want to fix? Um, and I think one of the things with Logcat that was the most confusing is like the filters, um, because you essentially had like three different, oh, you had like three different ways to filter or search, really. It was like you had the field, actually, I wonder. Welcome, Ivan. <laughs> Hola, hola a todos. Yeah. Uh, uh, co, co, que tal, que tal, uh, beautiful people. Uh, hola, Chris. Hola, Sebastiano. Hola. Eh, hola, Elivano. ¿Cómo estás? Eh, co, eh, eh, estoy, estoy bien. Estoy cansado. Uh, today was one of those days. ¿Dónde está el perro? El perro, uh, el perro, uh, he just came from a, from a walk, so probably uh, he's drinking. I'm going to bring in as soon as possible, so uh, everything is fine. Because obviously Mark was already asking on the chat. 
Yeah, I know, I know. I actually because I, I I brought him in when I when I joined Skype, but then he started like you know f- looking at the door probably because he was thirsty. <laughs> so I let him out, and now at some point somebody's just gonna throw the dog back in the room or gonna fetch it. Uh, so throw I... sounds slightly too violent. <laughs> no, 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 because that's a retriever. So we we throw we throw things. Ah, okay. Throw just... it. Throw a treat and the dog will get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, sorry, Chris, for interrupting. So, you were saying about the low cut filtering. Yeah, uh, actually, I guess we can go to my screen now. Um, yes. Will it work? Yes. Woo! First try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, filtering a lot, but oh, I think I stopped. Yeah, anyway, it broke. Um, but this was, you know, the old, or this is the current Logcat, and there's a new one, uh, which we can look at in a sec. But, you know, there the problem here was, like, people were often confused about, like, what does this field do versus what does this do? Um, and so it's like sometimes people, like, I think, the most simplistic thing was people saw, OK, I just want to type in here and filter it. But then when they actually tried to use these more complicated filters, it wasn't clear how this drop down and these filters uh, actually related to this search field here. Um, and so there's often this confusion about like how they conflicted. And so and we didn't you know, we didn't have a map or even documentation to really explain it. Um, and then, you know, if you actually clicked into the console, you can even search the console, which is just part of the console output. And so for, for a lot of folks, it was like confusing to be like, well, which one do I use? How do they work with each other? Why don't I see things? Um, and so, and then the other thing is like, you could only see one log cat. Um, so if you wanted to monitor multiple processes, like, you know, if you happen to have two apps that you're looking at, or you might have two devices that communicate with each other, you couldn't really do that with log cat. You could only look at one one device at a time and one process at a time. Um, and so these all these things we kind of took into consideration when doing the redesign was, you know, thinking about the use cases of like, do people want to see multiple streams of output? We want to make filtering easier and, and more intuitive and like make a lot more sense so that people don't have to like necessarily be an expert in regex, but also, you know, can just kind of freely type and then see what happens. Um, and then the other thing I think people really appreciated was like, you couldn't format this output if this is kind of the output you got. Um, and so we also made this, I think we added a lot more colors and differentiation so you could see like what's a process ID versus, um, you know, the actual message to, to kind of help people scan this a lot more easily. Uh, and so if we actually go to the new log cat, um, I might have to restart my machine though. Well, hopefully only the ID. (laughs) Hey, that's me. Hello. Hi. Yeah. (laughs) Let's see. Where did it go? So many Android Studios. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look. (laughs) Wait. Icons? Yeah, you can put emojis in there. That's cool. That's on Toolbox, though. Yeah. That's cool. Some emojis don't. Don't work though. So. <laughs> uh, um, go Java. figure. Compose. Java. Java. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh wait. Why? Where did my emulator go? So you you have manually put the display name for every oh. ID that you have in toolbox. Yeah, because you cool. know we we only had these icons like stable and canary, yeah. and so it, it became very confusing for me to know <laughs> which one. Um, yeah, I understand. I have exactly the same problem both on uh, Windows uh, with uh, Power Toys and on macOS with Alfred, where you get the icon and it says Android Studio Preview. Now they fixed it, but it used to say like Preview, and and they're like, is it the canary or is it the beat and they have the same icon so that doesn't help too much yeah <laughs> yeah okay so now we so now we have the new log cat enabled um so you can see you know the output is is a lot more colorful um this is just errors at this point uh but if we 
run the app or run whatever this app is. Uh, so, you know, you, like I said, you can, there's one filter field. And so, you know, one of the design considerations we made is like um, trying to, I don't know if it's like code centric, but trying to keep, be a little more keyboard centric. And so, uh, you know, as you start typing, you can just see it immediately filter. You can hit mm. control space. And so you get this auto complete experience that, you know, a lot of developers are used to. Uh, we have kind of our own query language of sorts. Um, and so, you know, there's ways, this is all documented online, but like it's, we tried to not make it too complicated. I think one of the, so we did a lot of user studies on this and uh, the thing that a lot of developers had told us, whether they were, you know, had been doing Android development for years or they were new developers said the same thing, which is like, I just want to filter through these logs, but not have to be an expert in regex. So can you kind of like meet me halfway? <laughs> um, so yeah. And I think there's also little things we did that were like smart defaults. So in this case, you know, a lot of folks were like, hey, I just want to see messages for my app. I don't really care about like all the noise that's coming from the device. So by default, we just have this package is mine, you know, as soon as you start up Logcat. You can always delete it if you want, but by default, it's there. Um, and one of the things we've learned through feedback is like, you know, are there other tags here that we could be using by default? Um, mm. Like, I think level's interesting. I think level is set to verbose by default, but it doesn't, it's not apparent. Um, oh, I guess it is on verbose, but yeah, there are some defaults here. But like I said, I think through the feedback, we've we've learned like what are good defaults and what are not. Um, uh, uh, go ahead. I find it actually fascinating that you uh, folks ended up creating like uh, a query language, which you can already, like there are some parts of uh, IntelliJ and thus of Studio that do use a uh, query language, for example, in the plugin manager, uh, you can use, mm -hmm. uh, it, I think it's very slightly different in the sense that if I'm not mistaken, they start with like a for slash, uh, but apart from that, uh, it looks pretty much the same. Yeah. So yeah, you have yeah, it's a slightly different one. Yeah, but the idea is the same. It's like something colon something else. Um, I so I I appreciate this. I actually think that visually speaking, uh, the implementation in the new logcat is easier to deal with than the one <laughs> that we have in the plugin manager. Personally speaking. Um, but uh, it, it's really cool uh, because it also kind of uh, gets people used to using the keyboard more. And uh, I was actually wondering if there is like a shortcut that brings the cursor into the the filter field. Uh, there actually isn't. But that is good feedback. Ah. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I yeah, I didn't like, mean this yeah. to be a feature request. I was just curious because <laughs> I'm I'm all about <laughs> keyboard shortcuts. Um, yeah, I think I think though the tricky part would be where your mouse is. <laughs> I um, guess the one that is yeah. like if you if you have the cursor like now somewhere you have selected something maybe you want to filter some, then that would be my uh, use case. Uh, but yeah, I I really really like this. Uh, and yeah, as Maya said on the chat, the fact that you can easily hide stuff there, uh, you could somewhat change the format in the old one if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is much better also because it aligns the columns instead of uh, putting stuff down to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, making it impossible to read because one package was this long, the other one was this long, and then align <laughs> alignment was an option. Yeah, and one thing we, I think one thing we're still kind of expanding is what formatting options people want. Mm -hmm. um, like we kind of did our best guess of you know what maybe people would like to start with. So like like I said, there's kind of a standard view and a compact view. There's some configuration you can do like column width and stuff to to change it. Um, but you know I think based on what people's feedback are, we we can always add more options like. For me personally, like I don't necessarily need this date time format. I might want something a little different, but you can't really uh, change it granularly mm. like you can yeah. in other tools. So 
I think one yeah. thing that maybe could help, could use some explanation here is the uh, process ID, thread ID, because you, you see them in the column there, but it's like, I see the thread ID, but where am I, or the process ID, is there an easy way for me to understand uh, that the thread ID is the thread that I'm looking for? So um, the, the process ID is, I guess, fairly intuitive. Uh, the thread ID is a bit more complicated. I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's a good point. I think the feed, the, the format is like this. I, I yeah, I yeah like especially when they're the same. Before. It's like I'm, I'm not entirely sure because I before looking at the the filter, I didn't know that the second number was the thread ID. I was like, oh, that's the process ID. Okay, fine. What's the second number? It's usually the same, but not always. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think, but I think that's a good point on feedback, like. You know, I think we could do better with the formatting. Like, I think it'd be well. I've I've seen this too, but this is kind of seems disconnected here. It's like the process ID is here and it's here. Uh, yeah, but it also like there maybe are some things that you could do in the in the lockout, such as filtering out the the, the internal things that you don't really care about. Uh, like on pixels, it's fine, but I remember when I was using a uh, Samsung device, it would the, the system, everything would spam a million things in there, uh, like the drivers, the Wi-Fi. Every time something happened on the Wi-Fi, you had five items in the locket, and I'm like, I'm just trying to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, and yeah, the studio deploy thing as well is like, but as a, as a, like on, on Samsung, Noise is like unbearable. My my experience uh, with with Pixel now that I switched to Pixel is there's, a, but I have a a couple of devices and one is the old Samsung. You see how much filtering is 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 important in this kind of stuff. Yeah. So the easier the the better. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think it it changed over time since the the first. Uh, the first release where this appeared. Am I right? Because I was trying at, at the beginning and I couldn't really change the size of the um, the, the columns number, and I was struggling with the. I think the it's not the package name; is the, the the previous one, the previous column, uh, like the one where it says Studio Deploy. No, which one is it? It's like the the, the show tags probably was so. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it changed or I couldn't find the the settings. But mm -hmm. now I see that you can you can toggle <clears> a lot of stuff. So yeah, this is definitely useful. And as Sebastiano was saying, I love colors. So <laughs> I'm a, a very visual aid. You know, I need this kind of stuff because my brain works like that. So I I pick on on uh, on colors. I also think that um, the new you Chris correct me if I'm wrong but you picked a new color palette for the levels right because I remember the default color palette for the previous lockout was hideous <laughs> Yeah we did <laughs> Um Oh you just found is... the, you just found a bug Yeah this well this is a the black text there. I, this is the fun. <laughs> this is the swing. Uh, yep. This is, this, How this I is know. A swing bug. <laughs> How I know that. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Like, how, how do you know that? Of course you know that. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, but now. I have PTSD with uh, switching uh, themes and, and making sure that everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the, the colors were were uh, chosen. So I think, so we actually have like a, a pretty extensive color palette for data visualization that we use in the profilers. Um, but at first we thought we would use those, but then the, the colors seemed a little off. And I, I think the thing that we kind of thought about was like, actually, this tends to be, well, one, it, it tends to be in this kind of like monospace font and it looks more like code. And so we actually, tried to borrow a bunch of these colors more from the actual uh, editor theme. Mm -hmm. And so that's why these colors kind of family better with the, what you see in the editor versus uh, what you see in like the profilers. 
but yeah, we did we did pick a whole new set of colors because the previous colors were were not great. So, and I I also appreciate a lot the fact that the level uh, in the, the like the V D whatever it's colorful, but then the text doesn't have to be the same color like the message and everything else. But in the previous one, it was the whole line was colored, and especially mm -hmm. if you had uh, some. Uh, difficult to read colors for the verbosity levels that would be complicated to read. Yeah. Yeah. One feature that is that is missing that we didn't know is there used there's a stop button that used to be here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I didn't know this, but apparently this button it not only kills the app process but it actually simulates process death. So yeah, it is slightly different from this button up here. Um, and now that that's gone, a lot of people are like, I can't use Logcat, uh, because that button's gone. Um, and so we, we are, I don't think so I have ever clicked that button in my life, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if not but, by but mistake. I, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. But there is a, there is a legit use case for uh -huh. that yeah. thing. Uh, and the, it's basically, uh, when you, uh, when you background the app, yeah. Okay. The app is still is still in the recent apps. At that point, you click that stop button. Okay, and then you restore the app from the recent apps. Mm -hmm. The app is not there anymore, and that's exactly what Chris was saying. That simulates like a low end phone that kills your app. Uh, and, I see. And it's, a it's like the a don't keep activities in the background uh, yeah, developer that, setting. But it was more like a manually triggerable situation. Yeah. And it was the only way, for instance, I remember we were doing this with Sasha a few, a few mm -hmm. years ago. The only way to actually uh, bulletproof the dependence injection situation. If you, you know, because you. If you use uh, the uh, ADB idea plugin and kill the process from there, does it not work the same way? I don't, I don't know if you can do that for, for ADB, but we were doing it in Logcat. So there oh, is no, no, no. Uh, I mean, a uh, use case. I mean, ADB idea, the, the plugin uh, yeah, well, I mean, by Philippe uh, Briol, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the plugin, and uh, probably the, the plugin is doing something you know, with ADB or some sort of. Uh, Package management, whatever, something, something. By the way, I'm gonna but, put the uh, link in the chat because that plugin is very useful. But there was a um, there was a use case, so we were using it a lot. Well, m more like in the QA phase of the app. Yeah, it it was one of those if you know you know situations. Um, yeah. Because when we did remove it, I think even someone on the Devrel team was like, "Where did it go? We need it back." <laughs> um, and then uh, we ended up tracking down a Stack Overflow thread that explained all of this, um, and that was like I think where a lot of people end up going to, and that points them to this button. Um, <clears throat> so we are we are adding that feature back. It, I don't know if it will be in Logcat. It might actually end up being in a different place, but we're actively trying to add it back in Electric Eel. So we'll see. Um, we'll see where it goes. But yeah. Although, fun, funny enough, like, I, when we did look at the telemetry, uh, less than 5% of people use it. So it was like, so yeah, I guess it's like once you do know that it does that, then a lot of people do use it often. But then for a lot of other folks, they don't actually know that that's what it does since it just seemingly seems like it's yeah, the same as the You would top think right. it's the same thing, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, yeah, and I think, or yeah, I was going to show. You know, you can favorite some of your queries, and so it you know ends up kind of going like this. Um, interesting design decision here was like we actually had a bunch of ideas and mockups around like how to create a full on way to save these filters, name them, and then kind of persist them. But I think for the first version, we just thought it was simpler to just have this star capability, and you can kind of just call upon it the next time you need it. Um, but I think over time, this will probably be uh, improved so that it, it, it can scale more. One of the things that we wanted to try to figure out was like, how can we share these filters across teams? Because, um, you know, people work on projects together. And so uh, 
one thought was like, okay, well, you know, this is really just per IDE at this mo at the moment, or maybe it's per project. I don't know exactly, but it's it's local settings, and so you know, could there be a way to share it across projects? And so that's one of the other things we've starting to look into. I just wrote. I, I just <laughs> I was just thinking about the article I published a couple of weeks ago about <laughs> pretty much this. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you end up putting that somewhere in the idea folder, I'll update my template to include it because I think it would be very useful. Cool. Uh, that was Dolphin or Logcat. Um, yeah. Let's actually we can go to we can go to Electric Eel now if you'd like. Yep. Uh, so what did you want to look at it in Electric Eel? Like we can look at all the Compose stuff. Um, I don't yeah. have the app quality stuff, Firebase thing set up. Yeah, so maybe account, but... maybe that's something that uh, Ivan could drive once he's played with it. Because <laughs> Ivan <laughs> is a huge fan of Crashlytics. So I'm I'm sure that to him, that was the <laughs> the main thing about the new release. I can have more Crashlytics. Yes! <laughs> Can I click, 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 click? <laughs> well, I mean, my app sucks, so I, I need, I need Crashlytics more than anything else. Um, yeah, the, the one, th the, the first thing I wanted to say, when I first got the the running devices thing uh, that was showing my phone, I connected my phone and was like, I don't need to use another app anymore. That's amazing. <laughs> it works very, very well, uh, and I'm, I'm happy that. You, you folks added the ability not just to have the emulator in the IDE, but also uh, connected devices. That's particularly useful if you're screen sharing, uh, like we're doing now, and you want to show what's happening on a physical device. I think it's uh, super, super nice. Um, I don't know if there's any like special things about it, apart from the fact that it seems to work very well. Yeah, I think, let's see, um, I probably have to repair my, my pixel here. Um, okay. Oh, cool. It, I don't know how you made it work first try. It never works first try for me. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the oh. demo effect god uh, is smiling upon you, Chris. It is, yeah. <laughs> um yeah what's i think what's well i'll just close this emulator um i think what's cool about it is like it it just kind of like you said it it uh fits into the flow of everything in studio um and you know it works with wireless adb because this is wireless right now but it also works if you you know use a usb cable uh and one of the i think you know, there were third party tools out there that did this. Like, I was using um, the one from Jenny Motion a lot. Uh, screen uh, copy source, or, uh, source. Yeah, screen copy. That weird copy something, something. Word that, that no one can pronounce. Um, or everyone has many different ways to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I used to use Visor then, as well a lot. Yeah, I remember I've seen a lot of people on, on YouTube use Visor. Uh, so, having something built in is great. Um, so, you know, and the reason I think it so it actually fits really well into live edit because, um, you know, in this case, you know, we can deploy this preview to the pixel. Um, Gradle will, of course, be slow to build because demo gods are not favorable for me. <laughs> I mean, they were until a second ago, but maybe you're pushing your luck. <laughs> yeah. Ah, no, 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 still there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know now it, it, it's like you can kind of hide this, and then it it fits. Oops, I introduced an error. Let's see, <laughs> and then you can let's see. Is it working? Oh. Okay, so no. now we're yeah. showing live edit now. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> and so it it works really well because like. I think that was the challenge with live edit was, um, you know, if you're using the embedded emulator and you wanted to use live edit side by side, it was nice. But then people were like, well, what if I have a physical device, which is a lot of people, 
Um, and so with this device mirroring, it makes it easy because otherwise, you know, you would have to like place your physical device kind of in the peripheral of your code to make sure that it's updating. Yeah. Um, and so with this, it like I said, it kind of just fits nicely into the existing workflows that people have. Um, I, I got like a gorilla pod just to hold my phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, whoops. Did not like that. Yeah, but with live edit, you know, um, it's it's probably not going to be as fast because it's doing so many things at once. Huh? Yeah, and you're also screen sharing, which generally, especially on Mac, seems to make everything slower. <laughs> yeah, but you know, even here, it, it it's nice because it yeah, it just refreshes and then um, it's there. But it also I think what I found is like it's a really great way to experiment with things, especially if you're using if you're learning Compose for the first time. The feedback loop with Preview had been always kind of slow, and so this kind of allows you to like type away and, and you know, check your work at the same time. Um, yeah, I, I love that this. I'm not saying it makes previews unnecessary, but it, it brings a lot of the good stuff that you would get from previews into your device, which is uh, super, super nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, and that's, so that's the thing too, is when we, when we were doing live edit, so there were kind of, that was the question we kind of asked ourselves, like, you know, if we, if live edit work works super well on device, why would anyone use preview? Um, that was kind of the harsh question we asked ourselves. Um, but, you know, we had our own intuitions based on our experience, but we also had done a lot of usability studies with some folks to kind of figure out. And we actually had people, you know, use live edit on their on their projects. We didn't bring people into a lab. We actually said, hey, here's how to turn on the feature, use it on your own code base, and then give us a bunch of feedback. Um, <clears throat> and it, can, it really, it ends up being your favorite phrase, it really depends. Uh, so <laughs> preview is super useful for, you know, things like seeing, multiple UI components at the same time, seeing them in different states, uh, different themes, you know, et cetera. And I, I don't know if I'll demo the multi-preview API, but like that was a big thing that we also did in Electric Eel that people wanted. Um, but then, you know, it's useful for kind of looking at UI components in isolation, but then, you know, you always want to try things on device, like especially for things that have required network calls or animation or anything mm -hmm. that requires the Android OS. And that's something Preview can't do, and we know that. And so we think, you know, it's a flexible system. But one of the nice things about Live Edit is it flows really well into the existing Preview workflow because you could always deploy your Preview to your device, yeah. and and that's what I did here. Um, and funny enough, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in the user study didn't know that feature existed, uh, <laughs> and so when they found it, they're like, oh, because. One of the things that's tricky with Live Edit is like you can deploy the whole app if you want, um, but one of the bugs right now is you know depending how where you're editing the code in your app, um, the whole thing recomposes. And so in this case, this is like my the top level of my app, but you know there's a bunch of composables in this hierarchy. And so if I were to edit something within this context. Uh, the, bu the bug right now is that it will recompose the entire layout. And so you'll kind of like start from scratch as if you would rerun the app. Um, and for, you know, that doesn't really work well when you have an app that ha that's complex and has deep navigation. So one of the things we are working on is we're calling it partial recomposition, but we know that's a, an issue. But um, so because of that kind of bug, uh, a lot of the participants discovered like, oh, you can actually just run this specific part of the app because we kind of wrap it in a very thin activity. Um, and when they saw that and they were like, oh, Live Edit actually just works with deployed previews, they're like, oh, that actually, that works perfectly fine. And I would actually end up maybe doing that anyway. <laughs> um, and so I think, like I said, it really depends. Like if you're, I think if your app is really small and you're just starting out, you might just, you know, what, what is your guy's phrase? YOLO your way through it and just <laughs> de deploy the entire app and just, you know, write the app all <laughs> in Fair one enough. go. Um, but, you know, over time as your app scales and you have more modules, you have more composables, your team grows bigger. It's like 
deploying the entire app and then working live on the app isn't always going to be the best workflow. Yeah. And so that's why we, you know, this deploy preview actually was kind of a, um, a happy accident because we had this feature before and the fact that it just works with live edit is like, oh, awesome. This just fits into the existing workflow. So yeah, I think it depends like what you're doing, how big your team is. Um, and so I wouldn't say like it's one over the other. It's just kind of depends how far along you are in your in your app. Um, to me also, I, I tend to use previews more to make sure that I'm adhering to specs. Um, it, it's more about that and trying out all the different variants. Uh, so I have all the setups and I have maybe, uh, as I was showing you before we got live, I might have like one composable and then I have four or five different versions of it just so that I can test that it works both in light and dark theme, that um, the different variants or the, the, the things that I know that are critical and that, that could break. Uh, so I have a preview for each one of those cases. And uh, that's something that it's hard to do with physical devices. And that's something that Live Edit will not uh, like provide on a, on a physical device mm -hmm. but at the same time it's uh it's very useful uh to have both options because i in my personal view they they cover two different cases the the prototyping slash uh visual inspection of the edge cases and uh the case where you are uh like you, you think you're done, and then you deploy to the to the device, and then you start to have to <laughs> tweak because oh, I forgot that on tablet I need to change this. Oh, I forgot that uh, I need to do that. Um, so it's it's really cool, and it's partially uh, covering something that I've always been very envious about: uh, Flutter developer experience, which is hot reload, which is life-changing uh, in the sense that any anything is deployed in under a second uh and and it's the same as doing web where you just you know tweak the css in the chrome inspector and you have the result there immediately um so i'm, I'm very happy to see this because it makes everyone much more productive yep um i i mean i yeah, I, I've done some Flutter development in the past as well, and and web development, and like having Hot Reload there was always so great, and you know, I always wanted something as as fast or as iterative and productive as for Android, and I feel like we're we're really we're almost there. I mean, and there's still some bugs I think with Live Edit, but like for V1, it's it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. My impression so far is that sometimes uh, it gets a bit stuck uh, and it's there's no uh, you know like in the in the run when you run the application you have the, the two run button the, the stop everything and restart and the apply changes button and sometimes I feel like I wish that there was because uh, the, the same uh, thing in uh, in live edit especially when it says there's some error or something I would I would like to have the the refresh button all the time so i because it's still a preview sometimes i'm like did it not update or have i fucked up something and i don't really know so what i end up doing is turning off live edit and then turning it on again and it takes a lot of time so just having a you know the hard refresh button would uh help me with that a lot i guess are you talking about on on device um, those issues? I th think I was using both previews and on device. Uh, sometimes okay. when I was changing a lot of things, uh, sometimes I was I was not entirely sure whether uh, the things that I just changed were applied or not because things would not behave the way I would expect them to. But then I was like, wait, have I changed the wrong thing? or is the preview that is not up to date? Because I've seen it a couple of times that it kind of got stuck and it stopped updating. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm like 60% confident uh, in those cases. And I, to be 100% sure, I, I would have to, you know, the turning it off and on again button. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I but think fast turning it off and on. Yeah, fast. Yeah, fast. yeah, faster than I would otherwise do myself. <laughs> yeah, there, there are. So one thing with live edit on device is there are some operations that are not supported. Like um, it is documented online, but like one of the things is like if you change the parameters of the composable mm -hmm. that you're map modifying, um, it will not pick that up. So in this case, like if I said take ten, right? Uh, I think live edit should break. Um, oh, oh, da, da, da. yeah. <laughs> so, but that I think that's the thing is, is that's interesting about live edit is, um, uh, even though we we documented things on we call them unsupported operations, um, we want to trim that list down as much as possible because the kind of user experience that I had envisioned and like the team envisioned is people should be able to just edit their compose code and see it update and like not have to think about like what change is going to, you know, get applied, what isn't. It's like that cognitive load in the moment of coding is just not helpful. Um, we want people to kind of just keep coding as if like, you know, everything's fine and then look over on the device and see, oh, is it broken or not? And so, you know, one thing we've been working on is like this indicator, like where it goes, but also like the message we send. So if I did run into an issue where I introduced a, an error. Actually, yeah, here, like if I introduce a compiler error, it's going to tell me it's paused. And here, what we're actually doing is we're just going to wait for you to fix it so you can recover from kind of these live edit mm -hmm. errors. But sometimes there might be a live edit issue that causes the recomposition to completely crash, and that will cause this screen on the right to turn just this white color. Oh, that never uh, happened to me. Oh, which is weird because <laughs> they generally break everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, and, and I think that's the thing is like we want to keep people in the flow, and then the thing is the more that the more operations we support, and then you know the more we trim down that un unsupported operations list, the less people have to think about how to use Live Edit. They just start coding, and like this is just how the experience yeah. works. And the nice escape hatch to all of this is like if it really. If something really just totally fails, you can just restart the app. <laughs> um, and that's funny enough, like, so the same team that worked on Live Edit also work, worked on Apply Changes. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the interesting user uh, behaviors we've seen with Apply Changes is that some people know what Apply Changes does, and they know which changes will be properly applied, and some don't. And so at, at some point, people, when they were using Apply Changes, they were like, well, it's not, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's just more reliable for me to just click the restart button. Yeah, <laughs> um, that was my experience as well, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, thinking about that with live edit, that's kind of what I wanted to, to keep in mind is like, you know, we could introduce different ways to say, oh, like maybe we'll pause live edit so that people can use some kind of shortcut to apply it themselves. But then it's like if they have to keep in their mind, like, is this going to break or not break? Then, yeah, I think it, it kind of ends up in the end. People are just simply like, you know what? It's just simpler for me to just hit restart every time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we are we are though kind of discussing a, a manual mode. I would say <laughs> is the way to put it for a live edit because um, we've seen some use cases where people are like doing a lot of refactoring while the device is live. Uh, and so, yeah, we're kind of thinking through that right now. But right at the moment, we think the the best experience is kind of this automatic one. And like I said, there are some operations that will cause live edit to crash on device. Um, and so the sooner we can fix those bugs and reduce that list, the better, um, which, is part, which is the biggest reason why we actually released it in Electric Eel, because, you know, I think we we did our own kind of testing with Compose, but like we don't really know what people are trying to do with Compose um, in their composables with all the different you know ways of using state and other libraries and things like that. So, yeah. and also I think like we've also seen bugs where people try to you know use um, views in their Compose hierarchy, and that has also caused things to crash as well. So, I have to say though, for yeah. something that is in its essentially first preview iteration it's surprisingly that wasn't the pun wasn't intended uh <laughs> for, for being its first uh iteration and it being a preview one i think it works very very well 
And you can definitely tell that the people that worked on it uh, had some previous experience uh, with this, because I, I think it took, what, three attempts to, to get to uh, apply code changes? Yeah. So uh, standing on the shoulder of giants. <laughs> Yeah, there was instant run, and there was apply changes, and now we're at live edit. So yeah, <laughs> first try, um, as Batman would say. First try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think the thing I was going to show. Oh, was, look! Oh. At, yeah, show me that. Show me that. Show me that. Sorry, I, I saw something animations, um, and now like distracted. It's like squirrel. <laughs> what, what are we seeing here? Uh, animation graph. Uh, <laughs> yes. So actually, ah, crap, I forgot. But now I'm really going to just do this yellow. Um, Wouldn't be appropriate okay. otherwise. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess. I think it's 20. Um, yeah, I think you can also use 20. No, I don't remember. There's there's a, a table somewhere online. Uh, yeah, somewhere. Uh, Annoyingly, not in the ID. <laughs> that would yeah. probably be a good place to have it. Wink, wink. <laughs> so uh, not, not a feature request. Nope, not yeah. at all. So, uh, just oh. user, user feedback. User yeah. feedback. Yeah. What, while this is loading, I didn't know this for the longest time, but you see how this screen is black? Mm. It's because the device went to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. It's like and you have it. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, but but it it has been like this like uh, all the time. At some point, it started to to do that, and I was like, "What? What? what? Did it crash?" It, and I was like, yeah. "What?" what the? And then you start clicking. Oh wait. Okay. It, <laughs> so now what? Do you want also the fingerprint? How do I do the? There was a there was so a time I, that you had the same problem with the emulator. The emulator screen wasn't by default set to always keep the screen on. So sometimes it just go black, and it's like, has it crashed? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I was like looking at log can and being like, no, the device is still there. Like, and I redeploy the app, and it's like still black, and I'm like. This was more on the emulator, not on physical device. But I was like, and then I restart Studio, and then I'd be like, yeah. wait. And then I think someone, I think actually Tor was doing a demo, and he found this bug, and he's like, oh, you just hit this, yeah. and I was like, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it hit the, the the power on button, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, you know, people in the chat are like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we are providing yeah. real content, real knowledge here. Chris, thank you. Thank you yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, I, I think the thing I, despite knowing that, I, I still told the team, like, you know, one thing that would be nice is, like, when I was doing things like deploying the device, it's like, that should be a signal to wake up the screen. <laughs> and so... It's like, can we uh, can we get on that? Because, yeah. Because the next time I'll forget and I'll spend ten minutes I'll looking at it and wondering. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a I have a friend that is totally not me that has this problem. So <laughs> sure. if you can fix it, <laughs> uh, sure. he would be very happy. Uh, oh, here we go. Are we? Is that the right preview? I can hide that for now. Uh, what I was trying to show. Oh, oh yes. OK, here we go. Nice. Um, so one of the things we introduced in Dolphin, uh, so we the animation inspector is actually for Compose is now in Chipmunk. Um, and that allowed you to, I think we've, I think we've demoed that before. It's like, you know, you could kind of play and pause the animation and loop it, play it at different speeds. Um, but one of the things that was challenging was like sometimes you have a screen that has like many different transitions on it, and it can be kind of distracting <clears throat> to see all of them play at the same time. So like here, uh, like oh, is it not playing? I think oh, maybe I messed it up. Uh, well, one of the things you can do now is you can actually freeze the. Actually, no, this is not a good example. Sorry. 
Where is it? Oh, actually, no, I think, no, this won't be it. This is, there's far too many animations in here. But I thought I had this set up. Maybe it's on main activity. Oh, it is on main activity. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. So uh, move up. Go. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> so here, right? Like there are there's multiple animations. Oh, whoops. There are multiple animations happening on this screen because it happens to have like the menu or sorry, the backdrop. It has this cart on the bottom. Um, and so you have multiple transitions happening at the same time. And so one of the things we were trying to do is like, if you're trying to dial in these animations or debug them, it would be great if you could actually freeze some of them um, or kind of stop them midway. And so that's what we've done here. So it's like, in this case, like for this bottom sheet, it's moving back and forth. But what I can do is say, actually, you know, just freeze this if you want to, and then the rest of the animations just keep playing. Oh, this is so um, cool. Oh, shit. This is so And nice. so, you know, as you're kind of playing around with your animations, like, you can kind of figure out, like, oh, actually, you know, at this specific state, maybe it's not quite right. Um, so we added this kind of, we call it animation coordination, but, you know, at the moment, you can kind of freeze specific transitions if you want, just to kind of, like, fine tune the animations. And then if you want to dive into each one, you can double click it and see all the curves and change the state um, as well. So yeah, so we're, wow. we're continuing to make small improvements to the animation inspector, but this is one of the things we did in uh, Dolphin <clears throat> that you won't see in Chipmunk. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, with that though. So do you have on one screen more than more animation than I have in the whole app. So, <laughs> so that's uh, that's the level of my proficiency with the animation stuff. Yeah, but that's your fault, so even. <laughs> yeah, isn't isn't always my fault? But it is. Uh, jokes aside, that's actually very cool. And co animation coordination is uh, it's very mouthful, but yeah, I, I like the <laughs> the the sound of it. Uh, but yeah, thanks. I mean, this stuff is super cool. I agree. Oh, yeah. And then I think, oh, it is 21. You're right. Uh, it only works in 1.2, though, for Compose. So that's why I changed the dependency, the coordination part. Um, uh, but other features we released for Compose uh, was the multi preview. I Actually, I think rather than demoing it, I can just kind of like scroll to it. Um, yeah, so here, you know, one of the things is like you often are kind of repeating your preview annotations, uh, especially with like light and dark theme. And so this way it makes allows you to make these kind of custom annotations yourself. Um, and then once you annotate things with that one, then we will, in Electric Eel and, and going forward, pick that up and then actually show you those multiple, generate those multiple previews for you. So you don't have to like repeat preview annotations and, and things like that across your different Compose files. Um, and actually, I, I, there's someone on the Wear team that did a really <laughs> cool uh, preview annotation. They basically tried to show a watch face like in 12 different types of watch devices in a single preview annotation, which was pretty cool here testing out watch faces. Nice. Um, uh, and the other thing too is like, yeah, Compose recomposition. So this is kind of a start to a longer journey about Compose performance. But um, yeah, in Electric Eel, we are now showing the recomposition counts for Compose, which I think is useful for, for folks because, you know, it the numbers don't always necessarily tell you something is recomposing too much because maybe that's intentional like it's just a a component that refreshes a lot and so that it's mm -hmm. going to recompose a lot but um having these numbers is useful because i think one thing people have also noticed is like when something doesn't recompose 
it's surprising. Um, and so that is helpful here if like things get skipped or something's oh, nice. not recomposing. And I think before people would rely on print line debugging, which yep. you know totally works, but um, this is kind of helping you towards that. Um, I think at a future point, we'll have even more tooling around recomposition and performance, but like this is just the start here, but we thought this was uh, important enough to to get out there earlier. Yeah, I think I've um, I was debugging some stuff yesterday, and I was like using the no the other day I was using the layout inspector. I was like, oh, recomposition count that's gonna be useful because uh, I was having some problems and stuff. I I am not sure why it was doing it, but it was recomposing on every frame, and that was obviously not great. <laughs> uh, but I fixed it, <laughs> magically fixed it. I will not question the fact that it is now fixed. <laughs> <laughs> the test passed so i mean it's, it, the right? counter doesn't go up on every frame that's uh good in my book but goes it i mean uh does it go up when you need it to go up yeah yeah it or does. it's just stuck to one and that's it <laughs> yeah no, no no it it does what it's supposed to do um i think i introduced a bug when i was um adding animations because of course and um I, I fucked up something and then I started using states everywhere and then it was fine. So I was clearly doing something <laughs> that I was uh, not supposed to be doing. But I fixed it. Nice. What do we have? What do we have, Sebastiano? What do we have? Um, is there time to talk about the recomposition debugging? I don't know, Mark. We have. 12 minutes. <laughs> uh, but we are going to give away some uh, stickers. Um, and also, because I love you old folks, I have put a new emote, I think. Does it work? Uh, it's not approved yet. Well, maybe next stream you'll have it. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. I just put uh, it there. But we have a new sticker, which is very much in theme with today's uh, stream. And it is... <laughs> Mark. Show, show, the, show the sticker. Show the so sticker. I, don't know, I don't know if you can read it, but... <laughs> I think this is going to be useful. <laughs> yeah, this is... This is the next sticker that is gonna hit the the coffee shop at some point uh, soon. As well, soon as I mean, we have I'm, time to put it there. I'm tired. <laughs> Today was a long day, so eventually we are gonna uh, place the new invalidate caches and restart sticker because I mean this is so legit. I mean this is just so much, so much needed. Uh, and yeah, uh, running the running the. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Aurelio. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a nice sticker. Um, just to uh, remind everybody, we are running the, the sticker uh, giveaway at the moment. Just type the, the right uh, word in the, in the console, or in the chat message in the console. In the I'm console. Uh, <laughs> brew upgrade. Christ. No, wait. Yeah. Sudo get me stickers. <laughs> yeah, su sudo join giveaway. And so you're gonna you're gonna get uh if you win the giveaway, you're gonna get the angry pizza sticker as usual. And uh if you are any kind of a supporter, uh either on Twitch or on coffee or YouTube, whatever you pick, if you are a supporter, you will also get the Holo sticker that you will uh, never be able to buy on the store uh, because, yeah, that's only for supporters. <laughs> Do we also have uh, like some swag from uh, last week's conference to give away to whoever wins today? Uh, yes. Wait a second. Okay, uh, now that Ivan has left, now we can talk about him behind his back. Ah, oh, fuck here. his back. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, so, the wireless uh, headphones. 
Yeah, we partnered with the people at App Builders. You know that we uh, we were there with Sebastiano for uh, a couple of workshops last week in Switzerland, and uh, we had we had discounts code for this for the tickets uh, previously uh, um, before the conference, and now we have uh, swag from the conference. So whoever wins the giveaway today also gets the mug i mean it's a nice cup how, how do you call it Sebastian? it's a keep cup. cup yeah it's a keep cup yeah it's proper uh, brand and everything it's like yeah, yeah it's uh made those things are expensive made, made in uk i mean who does that but apparently uh you can get one of this it's very nice and it's uh yeah super branded so thank you again for uh for this our friends at up builders it was a very nice conference it was a different type of conference that i that i enjoyed a lot uh multi uh, multi platform no talks but it was just workshops so there was a lot of interaction so it was an, a nice interesting uh format so it was great to again. to talk with ios people like having ios people at your uh ddd yeah. uh workshop and at my yeah. <laughs> kotlin workshop yeah, like, was... i don't know what i'm doing but it's fun <laughs> Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of interaction with the other uh, side of the moon, I will say, and um, and you realize that th the more you talk to people, the more you realize that they have, we have all the same problems, and uh, yeah, so meaning uh, um, managers that oh, okay. uh, managers and that's uh, the the product people. So that's that's the main problem. Oh, okay. uh, jokes aside. Um, it, it was a very nice experience. Um, we also, I'm, John, I'm gonna just throw it there, Sebastiano, because I want to uh, make the what are we doing hype, now? Hype, 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 uh, thingy, thingy. Um, we are uh, we are talking to Droidcon <laughs> for for more interesting stuff. So yes. we have Droidcon London and Droidcon Italy uh, coming coming soon. Uh, ish i mean italy october is bit... yeah. both of them italy at the beginning yeah. of october and uh, london at the end of october and respectively yeah, we, italy we, and london obviously we, we are we are cooking up things so yeah. stay tuned if you plan to go um to london or to turin uh, stay tuned well i mean we are gonna be there so that's a that's a giver uh so this is this is something that uh, i want to put it out there so if you are planning to go to especially turin i don't know sebastian you're going to go to london as well right yes uh yeah so. i'm actually on the committee the call for papers committee also as a reminder call for papers if you're a speaker or you want to speak at a conference both of them are open uh they're both very nice conferences and uh there's um like it's a great opportunity to go and speak at a conference if it's something that you have wanted to do but you have never managed to and um what else yeah i think we might even like i don't know if we're gonna start today but i think we have discount codes for droidcon london and we will have a free ticket maybe we can give away the free ticket on the youtube what do you think it's been a while um uh... Yeah, sure. I mean, usually we do the IntelliJ thing or the... Yeah, this, this time is, is the Dragon London ticket. Okay, so uh, <laughs> if, you, if you, well, I mean, if you are watching, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, thank you, by the way. Uh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, so like, like and, and subscribe as usual. And uh, in the description below, we are going to put the, the word uh, well, you know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell it here. So the word is gonna be pistachio. So uh, <laughs> so the word is oh, some, something easier, something easier. Uh, no, it's yeah. in the chat. Sure it's go. written. It's done. It's written down. So <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, type pistachio, and you will get uh, your chances to uh, your chance to win a ticket, like a hundred percent free uh, discount code for uh droid gone london in october and we will choose a winner when we're back after the break and i think this is a good time to mention we're going to be off for a couple of weeks because i am going to the us 
uh, for Droidcon San Francisco next week. And then I, I'm staying there for an extra week. So we will be back on the 15th of uh, June. We have some really exciting stuff uh, that we're cooking up for, um, for when we're back. Uh, also, thanks to Chris for helping us organize that stuff, um, which I am sure you folks are going to like. And if you don't like it, I will still like it. So it's fine by me anyway. We are, we are, <laughs> yeah, we are, we are doing it for you, Sebastiano. That's I mean, the reality of... let, let's be honest, we're also doing it for ourselves. <laughs> so God, just, just kidding. Uh, anyway, more stickers on the, on the store. Don't forget that you can get the pinched hands you can get the yolo driven development stickers on the store uh you can get the kulo sticker because why not i mean you can get everything uh you cannot get singularly the spike ticket because you need ticket. to buy the well whatever sticker <laughs> i know i'm too old for this so just i know i know um so jokes aside uh thank you for any kind of support that you, that uh you decided to give us um what else do we have, Sebastiano? I think I mean, Chris, Chris Chris just turned the stream in a, like a solo background ASMR uh, live coding <laughs> session. Yeah. Like, Sorry, I love Chris. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I love it. He's just getting there. But you know, yeah, nerd, even nerds gonna be nerds. You weren't here at the beginning of the stream. I tried to do the even thing and I sucked at it. It was terrible. Awesome. Uh, so that much, that yeah, teaches me that I should leave this to the professionals. I'm I'm very sorry. Yeah, every everybody has a craft uh, I that's, know. Uh, that's my my craft but jokes aside this was actually very nice even if i joined uh, a bit late uh, it was a very nice overview and i look forward to all these improvements in andre studio because yeah i mean i'm a intellij person because i usually don't uh, don't use a lot i don't need a lot of new stuff in andre studio so that was my my pain point uh, but now with compose I feel that there is a lot of stuff yeah. that it's missing in uh, in IntelliJ. So this is a this is a good moment to to jump on the Android Studio. Yeah, to uh, be honest, I use Android Studio for anything uh, compose on Android and IntelliJ for everything else. Uh, but yeah. I again, I've I've been using Electric Eel for about a week, and I'm still finding things out because I haven't looked at the what's new until today and i was like oh that's cool oh that's cool oh that's nice oh that's amazing so now i'm like huh i think i gotta be using electric kill more uh for anything uh compose uh, which i've been playing around with a, a lot more than usual uh offline as well preparing for next what week's talk I mean, why are you doing cool stuff live and I, I don't understand anything, Chris, or what you're doing? What? <laughs> I'm not even uh, seeing what is... Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to share your screen again, Chris. Sorry. I mean, he he just <laughs> does this, right? I don't understand. I mean, I even started trolling you on, on Twitter to actually get you to work on fancy stuff just for the sake of having it in Compose. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. And... <laughs> Oh yeah, because you know this is this was what I did. I had like a free two hours after lunch, and I did this, and I was like, "Fuck me, I'm just gonna go back." And then there is a diaper to be changed in the other room. I'm gonna just be a dad for now. Uh, and, no, but well, this is great. I love it. Well, li live edit is. I was just the reason I was just doing this in the background was like one of the things that live edit's been really helpful for me, for me at least, is learning Canvas. Um, because I just, I'm not an expert at Canvas. And so like, as I write these draw commands and change them, it's like nice to see how it actually responds. And so anyone doing Canvas stuff, like live edit is, is a lifesaver for that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been using that exactly for the same reason with the stuff that I was showing you earlier. Uh, it's all like Canvas code and like, oh, I need to tweak things and that this is so much easier <laughs> and I can run it on device as well. Yeah, it's super, super nice. Look at you, fancy. Right. But I, right. I like that you created like a linear gradient there, uh, which, um, oh yeah, that's actually a good question in the chat if you want. Um, this is why you use draw with cache instead of draw behind. I, prob I, I have an idea, but I'm curious to see what you say. <laughs> um. 
I recently learned about Draw with Cash. I I think the way it was explained to me was if you are drawing something that um, isn't changing based on state or isn't really expected to change, then drawing with cash means they just draw it once and they don't have to redraw it on every recompose. So. But if you yeah. have, like, if your gradient uh, changed with some state, then it would be better to redraw it every frame. Yeah, it, I think it just depends how often that thing you're drawing is is, is changing based on state. Mm. So, like in this case, this gradient, I'm probably I wouldn't I don't know if I would animate it. It would just be like a fancy thing in the background. So, drawing with cash means I'll just do it once and um, doesn't have to keep redrawing it. If mm -hmm. other things, re if if state changes in other places, yeah, because uh, I think if you don't use it, then it ends up redrawing it, even though nothing's really changed. Yeah, because that's yeah. I was doing uh, some custom UI stuff and using Canvas, uh, like draw behind modifier, and yeah, it is redrawing things on every frame. At the same time, like I've seen, like I was looking at how the material stuff is implemented so for example the or or the, just a border modifier i think uses draw with draw with cache uh but it does a lot of stuff with it so i'm like it's a bit intimidating but now i'm gonna try and use that because then it doesn't need to draw the rectangle every time i don't know but it's a solid color yeah i think <laughs> I need, we need to get someone uh that is an expert in uh this sort of stuff and performance yeah, I, yeah, I've, I've wanted the team to, oh yeah, two things. But one thing is like, I feel it'd be great if someone could just deep dive on like canvas or just custom drawing in general. I think a lot of it is just people have just discovered it, you know, through their own experimentation. But yeah, if we had a proper guide about it, I think you'd, people would reach for it a lot more because it, it's really powerful. I mean, you basically just get this canvas to draw on and you can do all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, like here, I'm just drawing a background, but like I've also used Canvas to draw custom shapes, um, which has been really fun to do, uh, especially as a designer. You don't have to just use cut corner or rounded corner. You can actually just draw whatever you want with your own path um, and then use that for anywhere that accepts a shape class. So. OK, uh, I think we're going over time. Um, I don't want to steal too much of your time. Uh, but uh, Alex Vanyo, Stylianos, I don't know who they are for sure. So uh, if you want, just uh, drop us uh, like a whisper or something. And, oh yeah, oh. Alex Alex Vanyo would be good. He's uh, he works on he works on the team. He's in DevRel. Oh, okay, so Chris, can you make introductions, yeah. please? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yay. Uh, that was easy. Yeah. Congratulations to Last Boy, I guess. You just oh, the won giveaway. the giveaway. You're going to get so, a I'm mug gonna with stickers. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to reach out to you. Uh, and we are going to uh, send you some stickers. So congratulations again. And uh, yeah, also the mug. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put the stickers inside of the mug. Yeah, of course. Yes. Um, so I Sebastian. think I think we're done. And as a reminder, once again, we're gonna see you on the fifteenth of June once I'm back from the US. And uh, if anyone is around at Droidcon San Francisco, come find me. I will have stickers for you. And uh, yeah. As usual, thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. It's been a super interesting episode. Um, I, I love understanding how the things that I use are are done and why they're done in a certain way. So this was for me super, super nice. And uh, we'll have you back at some point for the design stuff. <laughs> we, we have at least one yeah. that we need to do, <laughs> one more. Yeah, trying to organize that. But <laughs> as I was telling you yesterday, I from the design things, 
uh, from design streams, I've actually learned how to use Figma. And last week I used Figma for some stuff at work. And thanks to you, I knew what to do. So thank you again for that. That was very <laughs> useful. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That was, that was nice. Um, so are you are you sharing with Chris part of your performance bonus? Uh, I don't get performance bonuses. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, I tried, Chris. I tried. Uh, but I can provide a very nice uh, write up on how Chris helped me. So I don't know if that helps your perf review, Chris. Link LinkedIn LinkedIn recommendation. I yeah, worked yeah. With Chris on this project, I can endorse. <laughs> yeah, love it. Um, okay, so uh, as I was saying, as a reminder for everyone, uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, for everyone that is on the Discord, very briefly, I'll, I'll put a Meet link. We'll create the clickbaity thumbnail, as is by now the tradition for our <laughs> streams, uh, so that the, the poor people that see our faces on YouTube tomorrow, they're going to wonder what the fuck went on in that, in that stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's called, uh, it's called uh, growth, growth marketing uh, yeah. and growth guru, Sebastian. Um, thank you, everyone that has joined us today on Twitch and uh, will join us on YouTube. Uh, thanks to and welcome to all the new people that we had today, today with us for the first time. We hope to see you around again soon and see you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.